every entity that exists, whether it is a piece of stone or a living plant or an animal or an insect or a human being, relates to other entities around it. Some at a very basic level, which is in a way the way, um, the way matter is. Electrons whizzing about, a proton and neutron, whatever. And, and then there is a molecule. And As for living entities, they are connected with an energy level that connects it to the timelessness. So it has a higher potency in a sense. So it wants to relate to like-minded, like-hearted, because we are all driven to touch the source of singularity. Everything is at oneness before the billions of the variations have came about with the Big Bang, so to speak. So we are all driven to connect, to relate. And if we are not courteous enough, know the boundaries enough, or do not stop ourselves the desire to impose and force, if we don't do that, then there will be a lot of suffering, which is a simple indication that you are doing wrong. You are following a, a pattern, or your will is going to produce a lot of suffering and mistakes and unacceptable states. So you have to be courteous to any living entity because it has a soul within it and that's divine. You can't force it. You can encourage, you can advise, you can do your best, but ultimately you have to allow these living entities with the illusion of free will to exercise a will and then learn that it is part of the divine will. It is a manifestation of the absolute cosmic will. You don't have an independent will. At best, as a human, you're assigned a certain role. And then once that role is done, then the author, the center of it all, the originator of it all, the destiny of it all, it takes it away, it moves. So you and I and every living entity needs to be courteous. I can't just exercise the will as though I am independent. I'm totally dependent. Physically, I'm dependent on other entities for my continuation as being alive. And each one of us is obsessed to continue living. And so you have to exercise caution, courtesy, and reference. Would I regret it later? Would God accept it if you believe in such a thing? And on and on, until such time, you do take action, you do have intention, you do have hopes, but you also take reference. What happens later, when circumstances change, would I regret it, would I feel guilty, would I, all of these things. Because we don't want, we want to flow with ease, and so we don't look back all the time with regrets. In relationships, we have to maintain respect, boundaries, and exercise total honesty. And whenever possible, prefer the other person's state and goodness and well-beingness to ours. The yours you always do anyway. So, but occasionally. Care for the others more, without expectations, without wanting to be put on a pedestal or just for its own sake, for your own sake. It's good for you because the real you is a divine and the same light of the divine is in the other. So the more you love, care and share with others with no fear, no anxiety, no expectation for good reputation 
or reward, the more elevated your own consciousness will be.